Why, hello there, Free Calculus 12 class. What are you doing on your heads? I guess last lesson about reflections really got to you, hey? Well, I'll have to change that. Don't want you to find gravity or anything on me. All right, so we are into section 1.2, second part. Last time we dealt with reflections. Now we got expansion compression. So we're still dealing with the same variables, just different attributes. So we want to apply horizontal and vertical expansions and compressions on a graph. I should have put that in two points. That's a handful. Basically, expansions and compressions, both horizontally and vertically. So, and again, ordering, mapping, and I'm going to promise you I will stop saying so between every class, between every slide here. So, recall this, y equals a f b x minus h plus k. So, if a is bigger than 1, then the graph is going to vertically expand by a factor of whatever that value is. So, if a is 3, we are going to expand the graph vertically by a factor of 3. Now, if a is between 0 and 1, we are going to compress by whatever that is. So if it's say one over three, then we are going to compress it by a factor of one over three. Or you can also say you would compress it by a factor of three. It's just three times as small. Now you might be thinking, hey mister, what happens if a is less than zero? Because that's not included in this. Well, think the last lesson. That would make a negative and we would just have a reflection. So you deal with the reflection, and then deal with it in this. So let's give this a try. So we want to graph x squared and y equals 2x squared. So x squared, you should know how to do this. You have that one ready to go. That should be in your brain. Now, for y equals 2x squared, we are expanding it vertically by a factor of 2. We could have done a table of coordinates, plugged them in, the x values get a y value and, and plotted it that way. But I want you to get used to actually expanding this vertically and horizontally. You need to get this practice because sometimes you won't have an actual equation to plug in variables to. So you need to know how to do this with just a graph. So we're going to take each of these points that are on the original graph and vertically expand by 2. All that means is take your y value times it by 2. So uh, negative 2, 4, double the y, um, take negative 1, 1, expand the y by 2, so double it. Notice here, 0, 0 doesn't actually change, because you take the y value 0, times it by 2, still 0. So um, that point doesn't change. And then the other two points, we also get that doubling effect on y. And if we plot out these points, we get a nice graph that looks like this. So that's what those two graphs look like. So you can notice with the points, we're just doubling them. We're, we're making the y values doubled, but the x stays the same. If we look at the b values, you're going to see a reversal of this. So if b is greater than 1, that means it's going to compress by a factor of h, or a factor of b. And if it's between 0 and 1, the graph is going to expand by a factor of b. So note with this, it's the opposite of a. It's similar to when we dealt with h. Remember if h was positive, uh, or if it's x plus 5, we shift it to the left. Whereas if it's um, the plus k is 5, it's positive 5, then we go up. So the x's just treat things as opposites. Just remember that. So let's graph the square root of x and the square root of 2x. Notice here the 2 inside of the root is inside the function. It's not outside. If it was outside, it'd be vertical. But because it's inside the square root, it would be horizontal. Same thing if it was inside the squared. If it's inside the absolute value, then it's horizontal. Root x, 
you can plot that. That's pretty straightforward. One of the that's one of the um, the graphs that you should know. So by having two inside the square roots, this is a horizontal compression by a factor of two. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all the points that are on our original graph and we're going to take the x value and divide it by two. So take each of the x values for each of these points divided by two. Again, notice zero, zero, take a zero, divide it by two, still a zero. So that point doesn't matter. Then we're going to plot these points and graph it. So here's the plot. Again, notice you take the, um, the points and you're compressing it closer to the y-axis. Um, some of you might notice with this, you could also think that this is a vertical expansion. And actually there is a co cool correlation between this. A vertical uh, expansion for some graphs could also be a horizontal compression. But that's just something that you might notice. We're not going to get into a whole lot of details about that. So here's a case where you can't do a table of values. We don't have an actual function. We need to compare these two graphs with purely um, the a, b, h, and k value. So we want to know what is the transformation going from the red line, f of x, to the blue line, g of x. So we're going to take a look at each of these transformations, specifically mapping out each point. And you'll notice with this, the Y value stays the same, but the X value gets cut in half. So if the X value is cut in half, we've got a horizontal compression. So it's compressed by a factor of two. Therefore, our function looks like this. G of X equals F of two X. So that's our compression. Now we're going to look at something like this. So given a point MN on an original graph, let's figure out what would be, um, where would this point be if we're given this equation? So looking at this, we've got something to do first. Remember, if there's something right beside X, you have to factor it. Always factor that. So now we've got this expression we can look at each of the types of transformations we've got. So out here, we've got a vertical reflection and a vertical expansion. Because of the negative, we reflect. Because the number is bigger than one, we expand. Here, we're compressing, because remember, x is the opposite. Then a horizontal translation to the right, and a vertical translation up. Then we need to look at ordering. Again, remember ordering doesn't matter with this. So um, I can do either verticals first or horizontals first. In this case, I did vertical. So we do the uh, reflection and expansion, then the translation, horizontal, horizontal. And always remember the compression expansion first and then the translation. So now we're going to take what we just did in the last one and actually apply it to the point MN. So looking at vertically, we expanded and reflected, and we're going to do that by just timesing by the negative 3. Then we're going to translate 7 up, so just add 7. Then we look at horizontally. So we compress by a factor of 2 or times by a half, same thing, and then add 5 over 2 to get our horizontal translation. So this would be the final point. We started with mn, do all those transformations, we, we get a half m plus 5 over 2 for the x value, and we get negative 3n plus 7 for the y value. So that is um, doing all those transformations, expanding compression. So we're going to look at this a little bit more next time with uh, combining all of these together. And uh, that's that. So, subscribe, like, you know you want to. I can see it right through my camera. Like one of those creepy, weird movies where I can just see right through the camera. Just subscribe. It's not that hard. You just click.